As we talk to IT professionals, one of the things they're really struggling with is the growth in file data and unstructured data. Uh, managing that growth is just a, an incredible challenge. And then the traditional NAS environment has really sort of reached its limits in, in dealing with this growth. So something has to change here, and so we're going to talk about that today. So joining me on the light board today is Molly Presley from Cumulo. Molly, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here, George. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've got written up here and, and how we can address those. Okay, yeah. So the first one you got there is uh, they're not designed for cloud. Obviously, traditional legacy NAS systems are they don't they were before cloud even was a thing, right? So yeah, exactly. how, do, how do we uh, fix that problem? Yeah, so Cumulo's founders back in 2012 went about the research project of what do customers in a cloud-driven world really need? Okay. They made the decision that file was here to stay, right. that there, if you had the right architecture for this kind of file growth and unstructured data growth, the file was here to stay. But then really what, what would the architecture need to be like that would scale across a cloud where if you have on-premise data, and you're trying to get to the cloud sometime in the future, or maybe you're just doing a little bit of work in the cloud, they design the architecture from the ground up with the cloud in mind. So okay. what that means is when you run a Cumulo instance, whether it's on your on-premise hardware or it's up in the cloud, it's identical software, all the management's the same, your IT resources, no matter where they're doing the work, are dealing with the same file system. So I would assume that would also mean that I can take a workload and move it to the cloud and not have to change anything. Exactly, from okay. exactly, and that's the whole idea. A lot of our customers really lean in with Cumulo because we're the technology they can invest in today when maybe they're not really in the cloud today, but they know they have a cloud first objective in the next five years. Sure and they know that they can simply just move their data up to the cloud with a replication job and continue managing it and sharing it with their applications identically to the way they do today. Okay, great, and, and is there any limit on which clouds at this point? Right now, we're up in AWS. Okay. Um, this is actually the first time we've said it publicly, but we're about to announce GCP support as well. Um, we leaned in with AWS to really get all the application support. We run cloud studios. We run a lot of active rendering jobs okay. and those types of things for bursting workloads in the cloud. And then for just the basic file system management, a lot of the file systems that the cloud vendors have aren't really optimized for extreme high performance. Right. You know, they're, they're basic kind of NFS mounts and S3 mounts, but sure. the idea of cross protocol locking, being able to not drop frames in a 4K workload, those yeah. types of things they don't have. Yeah. So we really wanted to nail that where we can have a great file system for the cloud um, before moving on to the next well, target. And, and honestly, a lot of them we see, they're, they're, they're ironically scale up, right? Yeah. They, they only run on one node in, in the cloud. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. The very limited. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we can so, scratch yeah. that one out. So Cumulo from the ground up was designed for the cloud. That was one of the base tenants of our architects at the beginning of the company. Makes sense. Now the next one you got there is uh, poor small file performance and efficiency. And obviously, especially as we kind of talk about data center modernization and the modern data center, um, not only is file growth uh, increasing, but the, the quantity of files is increasing, right? So we're dealing with lots and lots of small files, right? Right, yeah. And so that becomes critical for this, right? Yeah, if you look at world where analytics is really common in these big file shares, there's business unit data that may be coming off of a research group or something like that, but there's a lot of unstructured file data just from like corporate marketing and those types of things, sure. and it's a real mixed environment. The scale out solutions that came out kind of in the late 90s, early 2000 time frame were really just designed for those big video files, big image files, Right. do a great job at them, but in this mixed environment, they have poor performance in small files, but also the efficiency that storing one small file and being able to protect it with their erasure coding schema often takes three, four, five x the capacity of the original file. Oh, okay. So it just, they consume a lot of the storage because the architecture just wasn't designed for them. So what are you guys doing to address that then? Yeah, so we again, you know, really looked at this problem when we were architecting the solution. The way we handle our real-time metadata, the way our erasure coding is written to optimize as you move the data out of the cache into the spinning disk storage, mm -hmm. that all of it is done where you don't have to keep multiple copies of the file when it's laid down onto the disk drives. Okay. Um, but also just we optimized our performance. We spent a lot of time when we were still in the stealth mode, mm -hmm. optimizing the performance not just of the big streaming throughput but for IOPS and small file data. And that's been a big focus of a big portion of our, of our development team. Okay, great. So, so yeah, super good mixed workloads. Um, 
no matter what you throw at it, a Cumula file system really handles it well. Okay. Now, the next one I think is a big one, right? Vendor lock-in. Uh, yeah. Most, especially the, uh, if you will, enterprise uh, NAS systems, you're, you better like them because you're going to have them for life, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So how do you guys address the vendor lock-in issue? Yeah, so for Cumulo, we are software-defined, if you okay. want to use that term. But really yeah. what that means to us is if a customer wants to buy an optimized appliance from us that we build the building blocks and deliver them for them, they can. Okay. Um, if they'd rather buy from HP or Dell, we have certified reference architectures with them as well. And our sales team is not compensated in a way that they care. Um, we're really built as a software company. We wanted to sell software. And if offering a building block and hardware is necessary, we're happy to do it. But um, that's really not the business model. So what we want off to, or to our customers is a choice today in where they buy. They can buy Dell, HP, up in Amazon but also in the future that the way our software licensing works is all of our software licensing is designed you can move it to new platforms. So oh, okay. if you spend $500,000 on a on-premise appliance today that's running on Cumulo mm -hmm. and later want to move half of it to Dell and half of it to AWS, your software licenses just move with you. Oh, okay. So it really helps them have that investment protection if they, you know, want to make changes in the future, they don't risk any of their investment. Yeah, so they're not tied together between exactly. the two. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. Huge yeah. change versus traditional NAS systems as the business has been built out in the past. Yeah, and there, there's, a, there's a weird thing in upgrades when when it's tied that closely together, you end up paying buying hardware and essentially rebuying your software again because right. of the software Right, exactly, is because again. all an appliance. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, the next one, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what is data blindness? You know, so we always talk about, we have real-time analytics okay. that we our customers get lots of visibility into their data. But you always have the customers, you know, you don't want to say, hey, we do real-time analytics. The customers like, you know, why do I care? What does this really cause sure. problems? And our customers have data blindness, that they have all this unstructured that data that's grown in multiple systems over time. They don't really know what's there. They okay. don't know who's using it. They don't know where there's performance bottlenecks, you know, which user maybe is taking too much of the I.O. or the throughput. Sure. Um, so with Cumulo, everything as it comes into the system, we real time are integrating information as it's written into the metadata. Okay. And our customers can always be querying, always be asking questions of the data so that system management tasks are super, super easy. We can alert them when we're running out of capacity. We can alert them when we're running low on performance based on a quota. All those things are built in. Okay. Um, and it really comes down to customers there's so much data out there that mm -hmm. they need a way to not spend their whole day managing their data. They want to do work and not just their whole day trying to figure out what's going on within their storage system. So it sounds like this is more than just like, you know, last access date and what's old. You're, you're actually gauging performance analytics and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We actually can see, as long as the customers opened up their network to it, Cumulo can look at all the activities occurring within a cluster. Okay. Customers, of course, can too through a web-based, a cloud-based management software. Okay. And it shows them everything from predicting when they're going to run out of capacity nine months from now on trend lines so they can do capacity planning. Mm -hmm. It helps them to know um, if an application is not performing at the level you would expect it would, if you need to do some optimization with right. the networking. Sure. Um, it's very smart, you know, kind of the machine learning idea is predictive in the fact that, like, our cache will warm the cache when it knows a certain type of data is being read. Okay. It will actually warm the cache wow. with other data like okay. that. So there's a lot of machine learning built into our analytics. Okay. And then, so I, I think one of the challenges you see there is a lot of times to get that kind of visibility, you got to add a third party exactly. product, which is expensive. And also, because it's not integrated into the system, how do you gather that information becomes a big challenge Exactly. As well, right? So this is fully integrated. All the features in Cumulo are included for free. I mean, okay. included with whatever you paid for your software. So okay. there's no separate charges. And so this is just part of how the architecture works. Okay. Um, and it's really just designed to be that as the data is written, we're always tagging this information so it's always available. Awesome. All right, great. All right. So let's, I guess we're going to talk a little bit about automation, right? Because uh, obviously the NAS systems of today are, are very manual intensive and, you know, pretty low, uh, uh, pretty low capacity per admin sort of capability, right? Right. So we were actually just at our sales kickoff last week, okay. and one of our big users that's in um, the space industry was mm -hmm. talking about how important this topic is. That okay. as their data's grown 
and they have locations all over the country. Having access to um, essentially APIs to automation so they can automate kind of common tasks like provisioning storage, mm -hmm. setting up new users, those types of things. But also things like chargeback, all of that they really are at the point where they need to be able to automate it because they don't have the staff to do it manually anymore. Gotcha. Okay. It's too many nodes, too many clusters, too many locations. Right. And so he actually said, and this wasn't scripted, he one of the sales guys, probably his sales guy knew the answer to this, <laughs> raised his hand and said, Hey man, you know, how many at what point in your capacity, because I think he has eight or nine petabytes right now, okay. do you have to add another headcount to manage the system? Right. He said, I won't ever have to. It's all automated. Wow. And wow. you know, that's really just at this scale, to manage a huge file system, it has to be automated. So can you give me an example of like something specific that's automated that would normally be a manual operation? Yeah, so just provisioning tasks. Okay. So a storage admin comes in, in the morning, certain applications are starting to run out of capacity, certain users are running out of um, enough seats to be able to access the environment. Sure. All of that can be automated so that the admin doesn't have to do anything. It's driven through the API, it's integrated with the applications. They're working kind of machine to machine together. Okay. Um, but I mean, I think probably the, the easiest to understand is something like chargeback, that it will automate creating reports, automate creating the tools that once you've integrated your um, billing system, that it will just push out, okay, this this department you need to bill them this much, this department you need to bill them that much, this is what their usage looks like. You know, it's interesting, we're seeing actually a higher level of re re uh, receptiveness of chargeback now than it used to be because now people are used to paying for subscriptions and the cloud and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So having that ability, I think, is going to go back in vogue as, as well. I think so. And we are a subscription-based company that we've designed our software licensing, like I said, that um, it's very like the cloud, okay. you know, it's, you can transfer it to other platforms, but also it's subscription based and it has a lot of, everything about the company was designed a lot like the cloud. Okay, awesome. Uh, so the last one there is a uh, painful customer support experience. So uh, let's talk about uh, what you guys are doing to address that. So this is our favorite one. Okay. Um, it's one, the one that if you go look at Gartner Peer Insights, you can see the number one thing customers always say about Cumulo is they love our support. Okay. Um, we call it customer success, you know, so that whole idea of it's customer success, not customer success, not customer support. But what it is is when you talk about with customers, they think it's not real. Um, we have Slack channels to all of our customers that wow. are managed by engineers, product managers, sysadmins. Wow. Anytime a customer wants to talk to Cumulo, it really is like, hey, George, I have wow. a question. I don't know what's going on in my environment. All of us have visibility to that channel. I can watch it for the customers that I'm interested in, you know, if mm -hmm. I've just been out to see them. And it's a real-time thing. They don't need to say, here's my support number, and here's my contract, and wait on hold for escalation. It's that kind of experience. Wow, okay. Um, I, I would also think the, the lack of data blindness also helps from a support perspective too, right? Because you can have that detail, right? Yeah, so our, our customer success team gets a report on a weekly basis of alerts that things that our customers might want to know about. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you know, in the next month you might run out of capacity. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that the, your system's starting to have performance issues here? And they'll proactively let them know. Yeah. But well, if you huge. watch these channels, the guys say, hey man, you know, I, I had a question about how to set up replication. Mm -hmm. They sort it out, and then maybe they talk a little bit about football, and yeah. then, <laughs> you know, anything else I need, and they go on with their day, and we may not hear from them for 18 months. Wow, That's But it's incredible. a very personalized support experience. Um, we're really tied to the success of our customers. Sure. It's something Cumulo is heavily invested in, that people will actually say, you know, this is a company I like to work with. Right. Our CEO's favorite term is, um, we hear you and we agree. <laughs> and he says that because, when a customer calls up and says, you know, this isn't right, man. You know, I bought a three-year contract and my procurement team didn't quite get the paperwork done right or the wrong, you know, the guy's name on the contract is gone now. Right. We hear you. We agree. We're not going to do that to you. Okay. And awesome. that's just kind of his mentality. And it that's flows awesome. through the company, but particularly in this area. Okay. Awesome. So it's no longer painful. It's just customer success. Awesome. So before we uh, exit the video, uh, why don't you uh, just give us uh, some quick background on, on sort of where the company came from, who the founders are, and kind of what your plan is going forward. Yeah, you bet. So the um, company was founded back in 2012. Quite a few of the architects actually came out of Isilon, okay. um, the, kind of the original guys over there. Okay. We're at, based up in Seattle. Um, the funding that we have is kind of the key kind of gold um, VCs out there. Okay. We're run by 
um, a leadership team that has a lot of experience in the file storage industry okay. um, all across the board. They have file experience. And really, the company is just looking at the idea of there was scale-up architectures that were founded back in the 90s, and then we outgrew those. Industry went to scale out. That mm -hmm. solved a lot of problems. Sure. And we're terming the um, concept of scale across, that as you scale across your storage, whether you have multiple data centers, whether you're leveraging the cloud, that Cumulo will help you to scale across your file system, across geographies, across different types of hardware, and really unlock a lot of the limits that have been out there in file systems. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Today, All right. Everyone. Thank you, George. Thank you. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.